Hi. Hi. Today, my guest is Lauren or Lorraine, whichever that you prefer. Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine, I forgot that. Anyway, Lorraine is going to tell me a little bit about the upcoming event she has. I believe it's in yeah. May. It is. So um, it's on the 31st of May to the 2nd of June at um, Kerno Healing Fields, which is a beautiful location um, just on the outskirts of Boscastle. Um, so uh, if people want to find out where that location is, um, I'll give you some links for them to, to um, you know, connect to and find out exactly where we're going to be. Now, a lot of people probably won't understand what the aim is, what about what you do in, in these events. Because there's lots of, as you probably know yourself, you've probably heard it all, the misconceptions about the iffy dippy stuff, why should I bother, yeah. bloody, bloody, blah. Woo -woo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So let's explain a little bit what it is in simplest terms. Well, very simply and basically, <clears throat> excuse me, um, holistic wellness deals with... Um, a person as a whole. So we have a physical body. Here we are in the flesh. We have a spiritual body. That's anything that is outside of our five normal senses. Um, you know, you taste, you touch, uh, you smell, etc. So we have a spiritual body. Um, we have um, an emotional body, which is a connection of the mind and the body. And we have a mental body, you know, so our mental, um, our mental health and mental awareness. So when we're talking about holistic wellness, your practitioner will not just look at what's happening in one aspect of your body. They will sit with you and um, find and connect with you to find out holistically. So in all those senses where your dis-ease is. Um, leading to disease um, and then they will connect where they feel you most need that healing and um, I want to kind of iron out any sort of misconception about healing so we kind of generally um, call ourselves healers but what we're actually doing is leading that person to their own method of healing their own healing so i will lead you to heal yourself um in in whichever modality i've chosen to use does that make uh, sense yeah that makes sense to me basically like um i know during the period we had with covid a lot more people getting in touch with their inner selves a lot more because yes. it, it was obviously the threat of um your immortality yes. so became very, very real. And then yeah. suddenly they wanted to connect back into nature. There's a lot of these so-called subjects now will probably come from the early days of the naturalists and the, um, well, not, I won't call them witches because they weren't really witches, herbalists Wise of their women. time. Yeah, in, in their time because... Oh they they practice a lot of that and then a lot of that was that's why the misconception happened when they why they was treated the way they were absolutely i mean i think in modern society um what the paradigm we're in at the moment is that people are kept so busy um nowadays you know and it has been for decades now um both parents work when they have <clears throat> when they have children the, children's, the children are put into schools. Um, there's always a program when they leave school. There's something else going on because the parents are so busy because life has become very expensive. Um, and we're so busy, we don't take the time to stop and connect with nature. So we go through trauma after trauma, stress after stress, without actually acknowledging that. And the body stores the memory of all of this and the psyche, the brain stores the memory of all of this trauma, all of this stress. And um, the modern day disease is are things like post 
um, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, um, cancers, um, et cetera, et cetera, because we haven't had a chance to stop, ground. And as you say, the best grounding thing that we can do is to be out in nature, to have our bare feet on the earth, um, to, you know, be amongst trees, um, to be by the water. And this isn't woo-woo because scientifically, if you've got your bare feet on the ground, you're releasing all the negative ions, you know, the, the, and if you are connecting with um, the forest, you're breathing in pure oxygen, um, you're bound to be feeling better. If you're by the ocean, there's the ozone. So people, you know, have kind of misconceived things by thinking, yeah, yeah, that's just, you know, as I say, woo woo, you want to do that, you want to hug a tree, you want to this, you want to that. But look into the science of it as well. It all makes sense. Yeah, I, I do know that a lot of um, doctors now with cancer treatments, along with the cancer treatment, obviously, yes. they do recommend that you try to do more like Chinese therapy, acupuncture, Yes. So make ways of making you feel more relaxed, more what so the treatment can work a little bit better. Because I'm always a great believer if that any treatment to work, whatever medicines you're on, you have to make it want it to work. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think that um when we have disease, it's the um the final symptom of what's been going on in the holistic body of a person and um, the traditional medicines the ayurvedic medicines the chinese um, herbal remedies the you know as, as you're saying the witches um, kind of like approach the herbalists approach um, is to be working with a person's body um, rather than just providing something that is simple that will deal with the, with a symptom. So every plant, um, everything that's been created on our beautiful earth has a property that can be used positively for a person's body. Um, so you can use these medicines, um, the sacred medicines, at any stage of dis-ease in the body. So if we can catch it early, so if we're dealing with you know, a, a person's inability to sleep, for example, that's symptomatic of other things. So if we can deal with, just reel it back to where the thing originates, that the herbalist, the Ayurvedic doctor will find the herb or the medicine um, that will actually help alleviate those symptoms and work with the body to fortify the body, to fortify the immune system, um, and so on. Do you so, yeah. Some... Oh, sorry. Yeah, we, we, sorry. Yes, we are. We're not going back. We're we're going forward, and we're remembering. Yeah, I, we're remembering. I, think, I think sometimes what people get confused with is because obviously the the, 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 the religious beliefs. Yeah, I'm not knocking any religious beliefs because no, absolutely. Not. And I don't think you do uh, as such. You're not saying that as such. You're not. If someone wants to believe in miracles or prayer, or which is all the yeah. same thing, basically, if you break it down, it's all yeah. belief in, like you say, going back to your inner self and yeah. making sure that, it's basically the same thing. Yeah. That is absolutely the key word. It's, it's belief, um, and um, it's what do we believe, and and people are. It's one of my big subjects at the moment is um, being aware of how we self-talk um, and our thoughts determine our speech. So if we're thinking something and we're saying something, then that's how it's going to be. So it's catching that 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 self-talk straight away. Um, and that's belief. It's nothing to do with religion. Everybody's religious practices are sacred to them and should be honoured. You know, that's their choice. But belief is something that goes beyond because it starts with the self and it starts with what's happening in our psyche. Now tell me a little bit about what you do. It's the dancing. The, ah, I can never, yes. I can never pronounce it. So. 
<laughs> ecstatic awakening dance so I, oh. I do a lot of I use a lot of healing modalities um, my background is in um, fitness so I'm a fitness professional personal trainer Pilates um, exercise to music aqua fit spinning here you name it um, I've um, studied it all and taught it all and um, so to kind of get you to where you were asking me about the ecstatic awakening dance. Um, I had um, I had a lot of trauma in my life, um, as we all have. And um, it came to a point where there was a serious event that happened and it put me into um, post-traumatic stress disorder response. So I was unable to operate um, on, on a... a you know an, a normal level if we can call it normal I, I wasn't able to work any longer I wasn't able to see my children I wasn't able to do anything and I didn't want to be stuck there and um, I have a lot of spiritual awareness and um, you know I so it's not just a spiritual thing it's a physical thing as well I, I was wanting to find a way of healing myself and releasing this trauma and moving forward with my life so um, besides the conventional therapies to, to, to help me heal from PTSD, um, I looked into um, holistic therapies. And um, as my fitness um, was really a predominant thing in my life, um, I found Ecstatic Awakening Dance and I was taught by um, Rebecca Hanscom from the School of Ecstatic Music, uh, Ecstatic Movement, sorry. Um, and what this does, it enables you to get out of your head in a healthy way. Um, so a lot of people try and get out of their head by drug taking or um, alcohol drug taking. That's symptomatic of other things. Some at uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just because they enjoy that, but sometimes it's symptomatic of other things that are going on. And um, I wanted to do this in a healthy way that would release me from all the trauma that I'd had throughout my life. So. The ecstatic awakening dance taught me to um, connect to my body again, because a lot of time when we've been in trauma, we're out of our bodies. We, we, we're not grounded. We, you know, we're out there somewhere. Um, so the ecstatic awakening dance allowed me to connect with my body and it taught me how to um, use shamanic and um, tribal methods of um, expressing um, what is in my body um, to release that trauma. So for instance, part of the um, ecstatic awakening dance is where you shake um, because all the trauma that is in the body, all the stress, all the memories of, of those things is held in the psoas, which is a really big muscle in, in the inner body. I won't go into that. And um, it connects at the hips and we learn to shake that out and then go into um, ecstatic movement. So it's dancing um, in a conscious way. So your eyes are closed. No one else is looking at you. You're doing your own thing. And you learn how to um, release that Kundalini energy, Kundalini. Um, so the lady who designed this, um, she discovered, um, well, she designed this method of dance in the 80s to deal with people with ME. That was the um, emergence of the yuppie flu. So the ecstatic awakening dance goes through different phases um, where you're um, really connecting with the body, you're shaking out the trauma, you're dancing into your own ecstatic um, um, experience of, of, of what's happening in your body. And then the music will stop and take you into a drop where you're going into a meditative state so that your whole body can process what has happened. And then we come into a sharing circle at the end where everybody comes back to themselves and they can um, share their experiences if they want to. So it's a holistic method of healing. And I found that fantastic. And um, uh, so I, I got a lot of healing um, from my trauma and um, I wanted to take it out there. Uh, so that's when I started festivals. I was like, this is work for me. Everybody else has got to have some. And I started going to conscious festivals. So that's where it all started, really, was with, with ecstatic awakening dance. Now, if someone wanted to dip their toe in a holistic kind of therapy, say they, somebody's listening and they think, oh, I want to try something. I don't want to go in too heavy for the yeah. start. 
you know, like just dip the little toe in to see how I get yes. on with it and yes, see yes. how it affects me. Then I'll go further on in my yes. journey. Yes. So um, what would I recommend to that person? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there are a lot of holistic practitioners, wellness practitioners out there. So find somebody that you actually connect with that you can relate to. And obviously you're going to have in mind where is your dis-ease. So it would be looking at somebody who um, has um, experienced that dis-ease themselves and has learned how to fix that, how to heal that in themselves. And, you know, it can be as simple as connecting with your breathing to calm you down. Um, so, you know, maybe a meditation class, you know, um, learning how to quieten the mind because in the mind, that's where all the chaos is happening. And then the body starts to express, um, you know, in consequence of what's happening in the mind. So, you know, even simple things like, like I say, like the meditation or just to get into a class where you're doing gentle movement. I mean, that could be, um, you know, uh, getting into the water and connecting with the water in a mindful way and releasing your stress when you're in the water. Or it could be going to a, a yoga class. It, um, so we're getting back into learning how to move the body again and feeling confident because we're in control of our bodies again. It could be dance for some people it could be going um to see um a, a shiatsu practitioner who will help you release it's, it's like massage massage is a great one as well that's a holistic therapy so it's just determining i guess where you connect with that person and with the modality that they're using there is lots of stuff out there and talking to your friends you see your friend, you know, you've, you, you, you've healed that in you, or your load's better. How did that happen to you? There's a whole network of people out oh. there. Well, it's a bit like but, when I used to do, I used to work in mental health. Yeah. And I found that the best way to treat a person is not forget about the illness. Obviously, they're real. But um, you try to treat them like we're talking now. And you've yes. got more better response because you've got to get to know the really bad days when they wouldn't do much. And then you'll get a really, what I call a, a very productive day where you connect very well. Very, yes. You wouldn't even know they was ill, to be honest. Yes. You? Unless yeah. you knew them, you, you wouldn't realise this connection. And I, I, I have great pride that I get this connection now and again. Because, you know, this, despite my career in mental health, I only had to help out with control and strength about three times, which is I'm quite proud of because, you know, it's quite a field where you get, you've got to get used to being very uh, verbal abused at, you know, they'll call you every name in the sun. Yeah. You have to yeah, do yeah. this. And people yeah, say, why do you do this? Because if you respond, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you respond, it, it's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are so many different degrees of of that um, expression of um, uh, you know disease or um, be, being unwell in some shape or form, having not be, having ease in your body, mind, spirit, and soul. Um, and obviously, the sooner we can deal with that, the better. But I I think you know we, we're coming to a point where we need to reconnect as a community. It's exactly that. We live, live such isolated lives because, as I said before, we're busy at work. The kids are busy at school. We come home. We've got barely five minutes to swallow something before we're putting the kids to bed or they've done their homework. And, you know, and we're not connecting in, in a way that we need to. And that's something that um, we are really promoting with our conscious festivals is to turn up, turn up sober, you know, turn up without intoxicants and just spend time connecting with each other. And we, we hold ceremonies, you know, and again, it's not 
woo woo it's just to, to to welcome people it's to connect with the energy we're all vibration so there's energy going on you know and people used to think that that was a hippie term you know we're all vibration but now the scientists are, have proven that we are vibration so let's let's vibrate on the same frequency together um let's make connections let's talk to one another you know um when, when I was younger and I had my children at home uh, and they were at school, I was getting connections through, you know, relating to people as I dropped my kids off at school. They might be very short connections. We get connections with people in the workplace. But in our societies, you know, if people haven't got jobs, if people haven't got, sometimes they haven't got homes and they, they haven't got kids at school, that we're isolated. And disease can start there, you know. So open up. Everybody is welcome. All of you is welcome. Whatever shape or form you're going to turn up in, whatever you've got going on with you, you are welcome, you know. And the other thing I wanted to really emphasize is that um, we're not negating um, doctors and um you know it's not like there's one side or another it, it's not like there's any competition there is no competition that's a man-made con concept it's just we're offering alternatives to what we have been conditioned in a sense to accept so first thing starts with community everyone is welcome turn up speak if you want to speak don't speak if you don't want to speak but just be there where can people find out information about how much it'll cost, where to find where to go, places, things like that. Sure. Um, there are various ways you can connect with us. Um, so my website is www.theholisticwellnessschool.com. Um, you'll find out about what the Holistic Wellness School is and what it does. And on there, you will find links to Kerno Healing Fields you'll be able to see um, who's turning up, some of the sound healers, the musicians, um, we've got people doing psychic work, etc. So you can look at a whole list of people, you can see the type of thing that they're doing, you can link into their websites, you can connect with them on Facebook, um, on Instagram, and there's also a page there which will give you um, a connection to the tickets, you can buy the tickets. You see how much your weekend ticket's going to be. Um, you know, have concessionary tickets for um, families. I want to make it affordable. Uh, I want to make it fun. Um, I know what it was like to be a single mum with four kids and um, trying to kind of make ends meet. So it's not an expensive weekend. As I say, we, we, it's coming from the heart for us. So you find all that on www.theholisticwellnessschool.com and just the drop down menu will take you there. And I, I know you've got lots and lots of people and they obviously there'll be stalls and forms of entertainment to keep the kids a little bit more preoccupied than adults because they I trouble with kids, they do lose concentration after a while. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what we've going what's going on is we've got a main stage, um, the White Buffalo tent, uh, where all the main um speakers and therapists and healers will be having slots and in the evenings there's always live music um, from conscious bands but we have got uh, an area for children so there's the youngsters zone um, we've got all sorts of magical things going on for them from face painting to um, fairy um, uh, sound healing and all, all sorts of things uh, we've got a men's lodge um, so that's where um, there will be time out for men only. Uh, they can go and form a brotherhood. They can listen to some speakers. They can have some therapy. Um, you know, all that will be free. It's all free. Once you've got your ticket, everything is free apart from individual therapies that you're paying for. We've got the women's lodge. That will be the same. Uh, we've got food uh, from the Anglo Turk kitchen. Um, we've got the Open Hearts Inn, so there's a cacao lounge and you can go and jam there. Um, you can take your music, um, your, mus your musical instruments and, and jam there. Um, we're going to have a fire pit, so there'll be song and um, just chilling out around the fire. 
we've got a peace tent um, and in the peace tent you can go and really find quiet um, I've got a licensed um, psychotherapist and um, uh, healer um, who's, who's going to be present there there will be other people offering quiet times of meditation you can just connect with somebody and just sit with them if you want to say nothing um, so there'll be there'll be something for everyone something for everyone um, so you've got um, at, at the entrance to the um, to the kernel healing fields um, we're catering for for people who have disabilities um, so there's a road going down so they'll be parked next to the road um, all cars will be away from the area and it's a lovely area for camping so it's just going to be a really lovely um, family weekend um, where as I say there will be something for everyone so please remind people again what when the date it starts and finishes yes for sure so you can turn up on the 31st of May at 9am you can start setting up your camp and we go through till the evening of the 2nd of June, um, but we will pack down on the following morning, there'll be a leaving ceremony. So 31st of May to the 2nd of June, um, yeah. And do you encourage people to obviously pick up their litter and things like well, that? Well, we are, yes, absolutely. We're a conscious festival. Um, so basically, um, what that means really, um, it's, I know it's a bit of a buzzword now, but it's just being mindful and, you know, mindful in all respects. So we're very mindful of the carbon footprint that we're leaving. So when you go to buy your tickets, you will say that, you know, you take your own, you, whatever you bring, you take your own rubbish home. I've given a link to the um, local recycling center if people are coming from afar so they can drop their rubbish off there. I'm asking people to bring their own cutlery, crockery glasses and whatnot so we haven't got to go in buy some plastic plates and then take them home and give them a wash when they get home they could take some yeah, plastic well, plates and that would be a better idea then less likely to smash yeah. maybe if we can have something that's not always along the lines of plastic that might be yeah, great it <laughs> might be recycled, ones, I don't recycled know. plastics great yeah yeah um but, you know i'm not i'm not dictating um people have to again with consciousness people just have to make their own minds up but yeah bring bring your own stuff because you know it is a camping weekend so there will be water there there will be toilets there you can wash your plates you can you know put put your stuff away and um that gives everybody a chance to to enjoy what's going on including the chefs <laughs> yes yeah. it, yes I, I i i reckon that the hopefully that people listen to this so i'll put it on my youtube channel and my podcast I'll put it on holes with you, moan and groan as well. So then it'll be so on there as well. And uh, thank you for spending your time a day with me. And I'll do this bit now.